evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the lair of the film exorcist. Tonight, we will be doing one of the greatest movies in history. Star Wars, A New Hope, which came out in 77 and brought back the sci-fi genre from its grave. That was, it was a pretty big moment in history, and it brought us to a galaxy far, far away, and it's just an amazing movie. So, let's get down to it. Basically, it follows the story of a princess, a scoundrel, a furry sidekick, two droids, and a farm boy who are just trying to get the plans to a rebel cell on another planet just so they can defeat the evil Galactic Empire and the giant Death Star that is threatening everyone in the galaxy. So, basically, Star Wars is a great sci-fi or futuristic movie, which basically... I don't know a person that hasn't seen it, except for my brother, who decidedly is very confused with the structure of 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 7, 8, and then 9. So, now let's get on to the crew. We have director George Lucas. It was produced by Gary Kurtz. It was written by George Lucas. Music by... The famed John Williams, who is known for Jurassic Park, um, Raiders of the Lost Ark, and many of the Indiana Jones movies, and most of this series. Um, we have Gilbert Taylor as the cinematographer for this movie. We have Paul Hirsch, Marsha Lucas, and Richard Chu as the editors. And now let's move on to location, which is going to take a while. Um, we have Tikal National Park, Guat Guatemala, which is most of Yavin 4. We have Ajim, Jerba, Tunisia, which is most Isley. We have Chot El Tejid, Zet Nefta, Tunisia, which is the Lars family house. Homestead, Tatooine, the exterior part. Then we have Sidi Dres Hotel, Matmata, Tunisia, which is the Lars family homestead, Tatooine, interior, dining room, and garage. We also have La Grande Dune, Tunisia, which is the, a the site of the escape pod landing. We have Cardington Airship Hangars, Bedfordshire, England, which is the Yavin Rebel Base, the interior, and all the hangars. We also have Shepperton Studios, Surrey, England, which is the award ceremony. And Elstray Studios, Burhamwood. Hertfordshire, England, which is most of the Death Star scenes. And on to the cast. We have Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker, which almost was Anakin, which was almost a female, if you guys didn't know. Um, he's also known for the Joker in many of the animated Batman video games and TV shows. Um, he's Guinness in Samurai Jack, Captain Sticky Beard in Codename Kids Next Door, Fire Lord Ozai in Avatar The Last Airbender, Skips in Regular Show, Snake Bite Scruggs in Scooby Doo on Zombie Island, one of my favorite Scooby Doo movies. Um, and then we've got Steve in Scooby Doo and the Alien Invaders. Hanukkah Zombie in Futurama Bender's Big Score. And lastly, he's playing Chucky in Child's Play 2009. So I can't wait to hear what he brings to that character. Um, 
<coughs> Sorry guys, I'm getting over a big fever that I was just suffering from last last week. Um, we've got Harrison Ford as Han Solo, also known for Bob Falfa in American Graffiti and its sequel. We have Indiana Jones in all of the Indiana Jones movies. He's also President James Marshall in Air Force One, a really good movie known for its, its get off my plane n phrase, which, pff, God, I'm pretty sure that's pretty high on the list of best um, lines in a movie next to May the Force Be With You. Um, he's also Dr. Richard David Kimball in The Fugitive. We also have Carrie Fisher as Princess Leia, who's also known for Angela in Family Guy, and Jane in Drop Dead Fred, another funny movie. We have Peter Cushing's as Grand Moff Tarkin, also known for Victor Frankenstein in The Curse of Frankenstein and its sequels, and Dr. Van Helsing in the Dracula series, who, he's really, from what I've heard, sorry guys, I haven't seen the Dracula movies, but from what I've heard, he's really good d with his co-star, Christopher Lee, who's also in the Star Wars series. Um, we have Al Guinness as Obi-Wan, Ben Kenobi, Anthony Daniels as C-3PO, Kenny Baker as R2-D2, Peter Mayhew as Chewbacca, God rest his soul, and David Prowse as Darth Vader, also known for Julian in A Clockwork Orange, another really good movie for its psycho-semantic fucking of the mind, and all the interesting techniques they use on their main character. And we've got James Earl Jones, who voices Darth Vader, who's also known for Mufasa, mostly, in The Lion King. And just, I love his voice. It's like laying on a cloud of sugar. Um, on to my favorite scenes. Let's get started with that. Um... To start us off, Binary Sons, guys. Just this scene, the music and the scenery of the two suns going down. And you just, with the music, you feel how Luke is actually feeling. How he basically just got screwed over by his uncle who claims he wants him to stay longer on to, to help out with the moisture farm right when he just wants to leave and find his own adventure. But also his uncle is knowledgeable of what his father ended up doing and what happened to his father. So you can kind of sympathize with Owen and Baru. But this scene, it's just, you feel for Luke and it's just such a beautiful sight. Especially with the gorgeous suns in the background. Just giving you this massive sunset. And the music. God. My God. I don't have enough words to describe the music of this scene. Next, we've got the cantina scene. I mean, everyone, you've got to know. This is the scene where we get the most aliens. And the song. In this movie, the songs are really heavily influencing on the scenes, but here, I literally, every time I look up Star Wars music, this song is the one I'm always going to next to Duel of Fates and Battle of Heroes. This one, just... Just, it's amazing, and it's fun to listen to, and it's a huge moment in this series, just giving us our first look of the many species of the Star Wars universe, and that's not even half of them. I mean, God, we get our Ithorians, we've got Biffs, 
Um, we've also, we also end up seeing, I believe, a Pantorian, or, uh, God, I can't remember the name right off the head, but we also get to see our first Rodian, which is Greedo, and it's, it's also home to one of the most controversial scenes, the, ha did Han Solo shoot first, or did Greedo shoot first? Personally, I got to say Greedo shot first, so Han shot back, but uh, it's controversial because they don't want to make Han Solo look like a murderer, yet also they want Greedo to look more like a mur look more of a murderer or a bounty hunter, but it's an amazing scene, and... <laughs> I love the dialogue between Greedo and Han Solo, despite having to read most of it. Um, we also have the destruction of Alderaan. Guys, this was the scene that gave us the biggest explosion in movie history during that time. And it's just, God, the massive power of the Death Star as it blows up Alderaan. It, and the gravity of all those people who were probably on that planet, including Bail Organa, who we meet, we don't get to meet until the prequel trilogy and the Clone Wars, and just, you know, the mass of that explosion killed everyone who lived on Alderaan, or was still on that planet visiting, and... If you look into the books, you also know that there were many Alderanians on the Death Star who were devastated. Even the one that pre recently in a comic, we watch one of them getting launched out. One of the gunners, who was an Alderanian, gets launched out by Tarkin because he tried to go against him. And it's just this is one of the most defining moments of the Star Wars series. Um, and lastly, the Battle of the Death Star. What can I say about this? I mean, we've got the great lines between the many wings of X-Wings. This is the first time we actually get to see an X-Wing TIE Fighter battle. And just the suspense you feel as Luke's going down that trench, being attacked by Dark Vader, and right when the Death Star is get it, is about to fire its super laser, Luke uses the Force, fires the torpedo, and you're just so relieved as soon as you watch that battle station blow up. You just feel a huge weight come off you, and it's so intense. Again, with the music, the intensity is pushed up heavily. And it wouldn't work without the music. Uh, but it's an amazing scene. What can I say right now? Um, and especially since it's been ranted about so many times. Um, on to <coughs> favorite line. Guys, this is my favorite line. What a wonderful smell you've discovered! By Han Solo as he's complaining to Princess Leia on the Death Star after they just escaped the cell block area. It's just... It's a light-hearted line in this movie, and it, it's just so funny right before Luke gets dragged down by the Dianoga. It's just... It shows this movie can be both lighthearted and also d very dark. Um, On to the trivia. It had a budget of $11 million, box office of $775.4 million. It was George Lucas. First off, George Lucas took a vacation to Hawaii with Steven Spielberg because he wasn't too excited about the premiere, so he decided to take a vacation, and actually, if he hadn't taken that vacation with Spielberg, they wouldn't have come up with Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. 
No, wait, and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Sorry about that, guys. And, actually, it the movie did really good, so George Lucas pretty much missed out on that premiere. Um, <coughs> Harrison Ford and Mark Hamill actually used to goof off whenever Al Guinness wasn't on set. So, they pull pranks or not really give 100%. When he wasn't, when Alec wasn't on stage, but as soon as he came on, they were professional as hell and would do whatever was asked of them because they were. Alec had such a huge presence on this movie, he, especially being a famed British actor, and I guess it was so overpowering for. Um, Harrison Ford and Hamill that they just had to respect him. Um, it's the first movie to make over three hundred million dollars at during that time. It was Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford never learned his lines for the intercom scene in the cell block because he actually thought it would make it sound more spontaneous instead of just reading off lines written down. Kind of like what I want, like what I'm doing. I barely have any lines. I don't have a script for this. I just have my notes, and I find it more spontaneous. And it actually, his scene was actually really funny. Um, the skeleton C-3PO passed in the desert is actually called a Great Crate Dragon, which we actually get to see one if you've ever played Star Wars Commander on the iPhone or Android, you actually get to fight a Great Crate Dragon, and it's... And actually, if you go out to the desert where they filmed this movie, you can still find the Crate Dragon there. It's actually even seen in Episode 1. During... Um, and then we've got in an earlier draft, R2-D2 could actually speak English, and his language was very foul. You actually can act you can actually see C-3PO reacting most of the time to the actual lines given to R2-D2, and it's... He had a lot of anger, supposedly. Wow. Um, George Lucas was... George Lucas was very uncommunicative according to the actors, and his only directions were either faster or more intense. And actually, one day when he lost his voice, the whole cast gave him a board with only those two, those two words or sentences just for that, just for that, because that's all he would ask from them, more intense. Give me a faster scene. So, and it's... It must have been really hard for him on that set to make it that hard for his actors. Um, we also have Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher perform the swing to the safety without stunt doubles, and they did it in one tank. And it, take, and actually, it turns out Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher were act actually had a lot of makeout sessions on the set of the movie, and same for Carrie Fisher and Harrison Ford. So Carrie Fisher got around a lot on that set, and actually, he Han Harrison Ford was married to his first wife around that time. Um, <coughs> Carrie Fisher's breasts were actually taped down with gaffer's tape, so that black tape you see on the ground, and keeping microphones and, and cameras and lighting on the ground, that's what covered her breasts. And it was all because there's no undergarments in space, if you guys didn't know that. Um, her costume wouldn't allow any undergarments, so no bra, no underwear, and... 
it actually she also was asked to lose a bit a uh, lose some weight before the filming so because of that she agreed with the gaffer's tape and hmm so yeah um the god damn it I've got a lot of these the only live-action Star Wars movie to use profanity more than once, so Hell and Dam are a lot in this movie. He, um, it's the second most attended movie of all time in North America, having sold about 178 million tickets. It, the Bantha written by the Tusken Raider who spots Luke was actually an... Asian elephant dressed in fur and fake horns, and actually due to the heat, it kept on ripping off its costume, and it was pissed a lot of the time, so filming with it was a lot, was really hard, that's why they barely have it in the movie. Um, the, the Jawa's language is actually Zulu, but sped up, and Greedo's language is Kuchula, which is a South American language. We have Carrie Fisher and Peter Cushing actually got re got along really well, which actually was a bit of a problem during the scene where she has to act like she hates him because he's such a charismatic. According to her, he's such a charismatic character, and actually, he was pretty sad that his character ended up dying. In the first movie, he would have actually liked to be a part of the rest, but sadly, that's what happened, and he ended up. I, they had no room for his character, and he was actually, he's known as the big bad of the first movie, compared to Emperor Palpatine. Um, Chewbacca was modeled after George Lucas's dog, Indiana, uh, and Han Solo kept on at calling him a man in a giant monkey suit, which is pretty funny. Um, Han Solo was almost a green-skinned monster with gills and no-nos at first, and then George Lucas figured he'd make him a black guy, which Billy D. Williams actually... He, he auditioned for, and then he finally decided on a white man and gave Harrison Ford the part after seeing how well he did when reading with those who were auditioning. Um, Darth Vader's suit was based on robes worn by the Bedouin Warriors, um, the first theatrical movie to be screened in Dolby. Dolby Stereos, and actually it's one of the, f it's one of eight movies who won an award for best sound due to the Dolby Stereo system. Um, <coughs> it's the shortest of the first seven movies, um, of only about two hours and ten minutes. It's archive footage of the World War II dogfights was actually used as a reference material for the final battle of the Death Star. Um, studio coordinator Pete Diamond decided to arm sand people with gaffy sticks, and he actually ended up playing the sand person that attacks Luke, Luke after Luke staring at the Banthas and the one sand person on the ground. Um, it's basically because he was the only stunt person at the time in Tunisia. Um, the, it's the second science fiction movie to be nominated for Best Picture Academy Award. Heard Carrie Fisher disliked her outfit for covering her womanly curves, because if you guys look at the old posters, or one of the original posters, 
Princess Leia shows a bit more skin. She wears red shoes in the picture, and her chest is showing. But sadly in this movie, she ends up wearing red shoes and a robe that basically constricts her whole body. Um... The reason that the scene where Luke and Obi-Wan carry C-3PO away is transitioned with a upwards wipe is because Anthony Daniels was wearing black tights below the waist during that scene, during that filming. So, you guys know they don't want to show who's C-3PO in black tights. It would take you out of the immersion of the actual movie. Um, the E-11s used in the movie were essentially the Sterling L2A3 9mm SMG, and the weapons carried by the Sand Troopers were MG-34 machine guns. So that's pretty cool, and that's one of the more later guns during the 70s. Um... It's the second movie to gross more than $100 million at the U.S. box office. Um, George Lucas pitched the movie to Universal Pictures, United Artists, and Disney before bringing it to 21st Century Fox, 20th Century Fox, sorry guys, I'm in the 21st Century, so it's confusing. <coughs> The Tantiv IV was actually one of the original designs for the Millennium Falcon before they did what they call the hamburger with an olive scene, um, design. And Tatooine was originally to be called Utapau, which, interestingly, that's the planet we end up seeing in Episode 3. And they named this planet Tatooine because of the town close to that close to their filming set, which is actually called Tatooine, Tunisia. Um, Star Wars actually inspired James Cameron and David Campfield to become screen... to become filmmakers, and Sylvester Stallone auditioned for Han Solo, and ultimately got beat out by... <coughs> by Harrison Ford. So, on to my opinion. Um... Yeah, the movie does still look... It looks a bit dated, in a way. But it's still a really enjoyable movie. And I can't help myself... But come back... Help myself from coming back to this movie... Each time I have to do a marathon... Or want to watch a good Star Wars movie. Because this is the original that gave us the adventure story built up... All this, this huge galaxy far, far away. And without it, we wouldn't have a lot of the technology these days or huge advances in special effects. So Star Wars was a huge part of American history. And the dialogue, yeah, is a bit um, cheap nowadays. It, a lot of it was improvised, or a few of the actors didn't really know how to act through it due to Her George Lucas's problems with directing his crew, and, but it's still a really good movie. I do not really like the lightsaber battle that much. I found it a bit slow and a not as interesting as the others, but since I've seen the sequence 38 reimagining, which actually makes this a lot more exciting, I've taken a look back, and sorry guys, but I like the sequence 38 video better. Despite the interesting dialogue used in it. And... A lot of the action is really good. I mean, that whole scene with Han Solo running after the stormtroopers to only end up being surrounded by a whole hangar of them, 
which is a really nice touch, by the way. But it's it got it's always a funny scene to watch, and this is an adventure movie, and it really succeeds at that, and it also succeeds at the sci-fi part where. Again, we've got all of these aliens, we've got our space battles, we, which sadly we only have two in this, and for its short runtime, it gets the story going. But it's ultimately still not my favorite. Again, that goes to episode three and solo. So I'm going to give this movie a nine out of ten. For how amazing it still looks these days, especially with the special edition changes, and I don't know, I really like this movie. I'm, I can't really say anything that hasn't really been said, and I, again... I'm gonna keep on coming back to this movie until it bores me, and this is like, yesterday was the fifth, maybe sixth time I've seen this movie, and it's still really good. So, next week we're gonna move on to Empire Strikes Back, everyone's favorite Star Wars movie so far, or that, the movie basically that everyone goes to when they say, when they're looking for a really good sequel, so, we'll see you guys next week, may the force be with you, and good night, and have a great night.